Nine is the seventeenth of uh, August, two zero zero two zero one one, and this is the we are starting on the Iti Vutaka, the first night. Uh, this Iti Vutaka uh, is the uh, book after the Udana in the Kudaka Nikaya, and consists of hundred and twelve. Uh, short discourses of the Buddha in both prose and verse. La. The reason it is called Iti Vutaka because uh, just before each set of verses, uh, usually there is this uh, uh, words, la, Iti Vuchati, thus it was said. La. Uh, that's why this collection of suttas is called Iti Vutaka, la. Uh, thus it was said. La. These uh, sayings of the Buddha are grouped into four unequal sections, arranged a bit like the Anguttara Nikaya, <clears throat> according to the number of items it contain from one to four. Uh, and according to this text, it says, besides these four sections, uh, ones, twos, threes, and fours, uh, the text is further subdivided into Varga sections, uh, groups of roughly ten suttas. Uh, uh, and, uh, okay, so we will start with the uh, chapter one, uh, the section of the ones. Eka nipata, eka is one, nipata, you can see it's the chapter, uh, uh, 1.1, 1. 1, the first sutta is loba sutta. This was said by the Lord, said by the Arahan, so I heard, or thus I heard, uh, Abandon one thing, monks, and I guarantee you non-returning. What is that one thing? Greed is that one thing, monks. Abandon that, and I will, and I guarantee you non-returning, non-returning to samsara. Huh? Beings coveting with greed go to rebirth in a bad bond, but having rightly understood greed, those with insight abandon it. By abandoning it, they never come back to this world again. This too is the meaning of what was said by the Lord. Thus I heard. Sutta 1.2, uh, Dosa Sutta. This was said by the Lord. Hate or hatred is one thing, monks. Abandon that and I guarantee you non-returning. Now the, the, the beginning is same as the previous one. Uh, abandon one thing, monks, and I guarantee you non-returning. What is that one thing? Hatred is that one thing, monks. Abandon that and I guarantee you non-returning. Beings corrupted by hate go to rebirth in a bad born. By having rightly understood hate, those with insight abandon it. By abandoning it, they never come back to this world again. Sutta 1.3, Moha Sutta. Similarly as before, abandon one thing, monks. And what is that one thing? Delusion is a one thing, monks. Abandon that, and I guarantee you non-returning. Beings confused by delusion go to rebirth in a bad bond. But having rightly understood delusion, those with insight abandon it. By abandoning it, they never come back to this world again. I'll stop here for a moment. Huh? These three things, uh, loba, dosa, moha, uh, these are the three uh, roots of evil, the three uh, things uh, that keep us in samsara. So when a person becomes enlightened, uh, he cuts off these totally. Uh. This was said by the Lord, abandon one thing, monks. Uh, what is that one thing? Anger is that one thing, monks. Abandon that and I guarantee you non-returning. Beings enraged with anger go to rebirth in a bad born. By having rightly understood anger, those with insight abandon it. By abandoning it, they never come back to this world again. Uh, 1.5. Uh, Maka Sutta. Just now was Koda Sutta. Number 4. Now number 5 is Maka Sutta. Uh, this was said by the Lord similarly as before. Uh, abandon one thing. Uh, and contempt is that one thing, monks. Abandon that and I guarantee you non-returning. Beings despising others with contempt go to rebirth in a bad born, but having rightly understood contempt, those with insight abandon it. By abandoning it, they never come back to this world again. Uh, 1.6, Mana Sutta. 
This was said by the Lord, abandon one thing, monks, etc. Conceit is that one thing, monks, abandon that and I guarantee you non-returning. Beings puffed up with conceit go to rebirth in a bad bond. But having rightly understood conceit, those with insight abandon it. By abandoning it, they never come back to this world again. This was said by the Lord. Uh, Sutta number seven, uh, Sabha Parinya Sutta. This was said by the Lord. <clears throat> Monks, one who has not directly known and fully understood the all, who has not detached his mind from it and abandoned it, is incapable of destroying suffering. But one who has directly known and fully understood the all, and who has detached his mind from it and abandoned it, is capable of destroying suffering. One who knows the all in every way, who is not attached to anything, having fully understood the all, has overcome all suffering. According to a commentary, the all refers to the five aggregates. But usually in the suttas, like in the Sanyutta Nikaya, the all refers to the six sense bases. Uh, six sense bases meaning uh, uh, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind. And from there, you get the six sense objects, uh, sights, sounds, smells, taste, touch and thoughts. Uh, and because of these two, uh, the six consciousness arise. Uh, and when the six consciousness arise, uh, it always comes with Nama Rupa. Nama Rupa is the object of consciousness. Uh, and this object uh, consists of mentality and materiality. Uh, the mental part and the physical part of the world. Uh, so uh, the world arises uh, because of this. Uh, that's why uh, here it says the all, the all, the whole world, the whole universe uh, arises at the sixth sense basis. Sutta 1.8 Mana Pradinya Sutta This was said by the Lord. Monks, one who has not directly known and fully understood conceit who has not detached his mind from it and abandoned it is, it is incapable of destroying suffering. But one who has directly known and fully understood conceit and who has detached his mind from it and abandoned it is capable of destroying suffering. Humankind is possessed by conceit, bound by conceit and delighted with being. Not fully understanding conceit, they come again to renewal of being. But those who have abandoned conceit and who by destroying conceit are freed have conquered the bondage of conceit and overcome all suffering. Uh, if a person is delighted with being, uh, with delighted with the self, uh, then conceit naturally grows, uh, naturally rises. Uh, so when you abandon uh, conceit, uh, uh, it's also equivalent to abandoning Abandoning being, abandoning the concept of I am, I, the, the self. 1.9. <clears throat> Loba, dosa, moha, koda, makka, parinya, sutta. This was said by the Lord. One who has directly known and fully understood greed, hatred, delusion, anger, contempt is capable of destroying suffering. Sutta 1.10. Avija, nivarana, sutta. Avijja is ignorance, nah? nivarana is hindrance. Nah? This was said by the Lord. Monks, I do not perceive any single hindrance other than the hindrance of ignorance by which humankind is so obstructed and for so long a time runs on and wanders in samsara. It's indeed through the hindrance of ignorance that humankind is obstructed and for a long time runs on and wanders in samsara. No other single thing exists like the hindrance of delusion, which so obstructs humankind and makes it wander on forever. Those who have abandoned delusion, cleaving through this mass of darkness, no longer roam and wander on. In them the cause is found no more. This delusion normally yeah, is a translation of mohala. But here, Avijas is ignorance, uh, and ignorance normally refers to ignorance of the Dhamma, ignorance of the Four Noble Truths. Uh. If a person does not have the good fortune uh, to uh, listen to the Dhamma, then he is ignorant. A delusion, on the other hand, is uh, something that covers us, uh, that makes us deluded, uh, uh, 
uh, it is more concerning the state of mind. Uh, a person may uh, come and listen to the Dhamma, but because of the five hindrances, uh, uh, sensual desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and worry and doubt uh, covering him, so uh, he has delusion. So sometimes some people, because of strong five hindrances, uh, their delusion is uh, more. Then sometimes they listen to the Dhamma, so they cannot understand. Uh, so there's a difference between the two. 1.11. Tanha sang yojana sutta. Tanha is craving, la sang yojana is fatter. Monks, I do not perceive any single fatter other than the factor of craving by which beings are so tight and for so long a time run on and wander in samsara. It's indeed through the factor of craving that beings are tight and for a long time run on and wander in samsara. A man companioned by craving wanders on this long journey. He cannot go beyond samsara in this state of being or another. Having understood the danger thus, that craving is the origin of suffering, a monk should wander mindfully, free from craving, without grasping. <clears throat> craving, I said, to be the cause of suffering la, and the uh, Four Noble Truths. Uh, uh, and craving arises uh, because of pleasant feelings. Uh, uh, because of pleasant feelings, uh, uh, we have craving for sensual desire. And also we have craving for existence. Uh, but if the feeling uh, that arises uh, is suffering, uh, a lot of suffering, like now the economy is no good, uh, some people go bankrupt, then uh, because of too much suffering, uh, they want to commit suicide. Uh, so they crave for non-existence. Uh, uh, they want to commit suicide. Uh, so these are the three cravings. Uh, craving for sensual desire, for existence and for non-existence. Uh, 1.12 Tama Seka Sutta. This was said by the Lord. Monks, in regard to internal factors, I do not perceive another single factor so helpful as careful attention or careful consideration or thorough consideration for a monk who is a learner, who has not attained perfection but lives aspiring for the supreme security from bondage. Monks, a monk who wisely attends, abandons what is unwholesome and develops what is wholesome. For a monk who is a learner, there is no other thing so helpful for reaching the highest goal as the factor wise attention or careful attention. Wisely striving, a monk may attain the destruction of all suffering. This uh, wise attention uh, should be yoniso manasikara and it is one of two uh, conditions uh, to attain right view. Uh. To attain right view, the first condition is the voice of another teaching you the Dhamma. This is mentioned in Sutta, I think, Majjhima Nikaya number 43. Uh, and that Sutta, the first condition uh, for attaining right view uh, is listening to the Dhamma, uh, somebody else teaching you the Dhamma. Uh. And the second condition uh, is Yoniso Manasikara. Uh. Careful attention or wise attention or thorough attention. Uh, so, uh, when we listen to the Dhamma, we must pay careful attention. Then we can understand. Uh, 1.13. Dutya Seka Sutta. Monks, in regard to external factors, I do not perceive another single factor so helpful as good, as a good friend. For a monk who is a learner, who has not attained perfection, but lives aspiring for the supreme security from bondage. Monks, a monk who has a good friend, abandons what is unwholesome and develops what is wholesome. When a monk has, good, has a good friend and is reverential and respectful, doing what his friend advises, clearly comprehending and mindful, he may progressively attain the destruction of all factors. There is, a, there is a sutta, this good friend uh, refers to Kalyana Mitta, uh, supposed to be a spiritual friend uh, or spiritual teacher. Uh, and there's one sutta where Venerable 
Ananda said, nah, he told the Buddha, he thinks nah, half of the holy life nah, has to do with a good friend, nah, a good advisor. Nah. San Chi Si, our Chinese we translate, nah, good knowing advisor. Nah. And the Buddha said, don't say that. And the Buddha said, nah, the whole of the holy life nah, has to do with a good friend. Nah. Unless you have a good spiritual guide, nah, you will, you will uh, not be able uh, to know uh, which way to go, uh, which, how to practice. Uh, so uh, a good spiritual friend uh, is important. But now that the Buddha has come into the world, the best spiritual friend uh, is the Buddha. And now there's his enter Nibbana. Uh, the Buddha is to be found in the Dhamma, uh, in the suttas, uh, the words of the Buddha. Is the Buddha's uh, Dhamma body, the Buddha's Dhamma body, uh, the suttas, uh, uh, it, it represents the Buddha now. Uh. 1.14, Sangha Beda Sutta. There is one thing, monks, which when it appears in the world, appears for the detriment of many people, for the misery of many people, for the loss, detriment and suffering of devas and humans. What is that one thing? It is disunity in the Sangha. When the Sangha is divided, there are mutual quarrels, mutual recriminations, mutual denigrations, and mutual expulsions. In this situation, those who are unsympathetic are not converted, and some who are sympathetic change their minds. One who divides the Sangha abides in a state of misery in hell for the aeon's full duration. Delighting in descent, unrighteous, he is deprived of security from bondage. By dividing a unified Sangha, he suffers in hell for an aeon. There are five things, uh, uh, five types of karma, which are the most heavy uh, evil karmas uh, in the whole world. Uh, the first one is to um, injure a Buddha and cause him to shed the blood uh, purposely. Second one is to kill an arahant. Third one is to kill your mother. Fourth is to kill your father. The fifth is to cause the Sangha and to, to split into two Sanghas. But this normally refers to monks. Uh, monks who create problems within the Sangha and divide the Sangha into two camps. Uh, like Devadatta. Uh, once you commit one of these five offenses, uh, uh, there's no way of saving you. You will definitely go to hell for a world cycle. The world cycle is an extremely long time. 1.15. Sangha Samagi Sutta. There is one thing, monks, which when it appears in the world, appears for the welfare of many people, for the happiness of many people, for the good welfare and happiness of devas and humans. What is that one thing? It is unity in the Sangha. When the Sangha is united, there are no mutual quarrels, mutual recriminations, mutual denigrations, and mutual expulsions. In this situation, those who are unsympathetic are converted, and those who are sympathetic increase in faith. Pleasant is unity in the Sangha. One who helps those in unity, who delights in unity and is righteous, is not deprived of security from bondage. By making the Sangha united, he rejoices in heaven for an aeon. When the Sangha is divided, then the monks do their duties. They beg for their food, give lay people a chance to plant blessings. And they teach the Dhamma to educate people to walk the skillful way in life, not to be unskillful in life. 1.16 Padutta Chitta Sutta. Here, monks, some person has a corrupt mind. Having examined his mind with, with my mind, I know that if this person were to die at this time, as if carried there, he would be placed in hell. What is the reason for that? It is because his mind is corrupt. It is because of the mind's corruption that some beings here, when the body perishes, are reborn after death in a state of misery, a bad born, a state of ruin, hell. Understanding the corrupt mind of some person dwelling here, the Buddha explained its meaning in the presence of the monks. If that person were to die at this very moment now, he would re be reborn in hell because of his corrupt mind. As if they were carried off and placed there, thus beings go to a bad born because of mind's corruption. Uh, 
Uh, you all probably know uh, in the Dhammapada, the first uh, verse uh, is about mind being the forerunner of all states. La. Mind is foremost, mind is chief. La. Uh, so uh, our mind is extremely important. 1.17 Pasana Chitta Sutta Here monks, some person has a confident mind. Having examined his mind with my mind, I know that if this person were to die at this time, as if carried there, he would be placed in heaven. What is the reason for that? It is because his mind is confident. It is because of the mind's confidence that some beings here, when the body perishes after, uh, when the body perishes, are reborn after death in a good born in a heavenly world. Understanding the confident mind of some person dwelling here, the Buddha explained its meaning in the presence of the monks. If that person were to die at this very moment now, he would arise in a good born because of his confident mind, as if they carried off, they were carried off and placed there. Thus beings go to a good born because of mind's confidence. This confidence uh, should be confidence in the Dhamma, uh, or you can say faith in the Dhamma. Uh. 1.18 Mita Sutta Monks, do not fear meritorious deeds. This is an expression denoting happiness, what is desirable, wished for, dear and agreeable, that is, meritorious deeds. For I know full well, monks, that for a long time I experienced desirable, wished for, dear and agreeable results from often performing meritorious deeds. Having cultivated for seven years a mind of loving kindness, for seven aeons or world cycle of contraction and expansion, I did not return to this world, I mean, this human world. Whenever the aeon contracted, I reached the plane of streaming radiance, and when the aeon expanded, I arose in an empty Brahma mansion. And there I was a Brahma, the great Brahma, the unvanquished victor, the all-seeing, the all-powerful. Thirty-six times I was Saka, Devaraja, and many hundreds of times I was a wheel-turning monarch, righteous, a king of righteousness, conqueror of the four quarters of the earth, maintaining stability in the land, in possession of the seven jewels. What need is there to speak of mere local kingship? It occurred to me, monks, to wonder, of what kind of deed of mine is this the fruit? Of what deeds ripening is it that I am now of such great accomplishment and power? And then it occurred to me, it is the fruit of three kinds of deeds of mine. The ripening of three kinds of deeds, that, that I am now of such great accomplishment and power. Deeds of giving, dana, of self-mastery, dharma, and of refraining, sanyama. Uh, one should train in deeds of merit, that ye long-lasting happiness, generosity, a balanced life, developing a loving mind. By cultivating these three things, deeds yielding happiness, the wise person is reborn in bliss, in an untroubled, happy world. This, uh, when the world uh, contracted, uh, uh, and then uh, that means the end of the world, then he was reborn in the plane of streaming radiance. This should be the second jhana heaven. Then after that, he arose in the Brahma mansion. The Buddha mentioned uh, in some other sutta that our actions in this life in the hu on the human plane uh, are, uh, is the effects of it uh, is carried on for many lifetimes. Uh. So uh, that's why the human realm uh, is extremely important. Uh, we create a lot of karma here. I like the heavenly beings uh, who enjoy, enjoy, enjoy and use up their blessings. Uh. And then the beings in the woeful plane suffer uh, Every day miserable, uh, and uh, they just keep uh, suffering. Uh, they don't create so much karma, but we as human beings, uh, we create a lot of karma. We use the mind a lot. So the next few lifetimes, uh, it's all decided by the human life. Uh. So you see, uh, after he was born as the great Brahm, uh, the in the second jhana heaven, uh, after that, uh, he fell to the... First jhana heaven, Mahabrahma. After that, it fell to the Sakadeva Raja. 
after that fell to the human, uh, became the wheel-turning king. Uh, so you see the good karma lasted so many lifetimes. Uh, uh. So he said, uh, this is the fruit of three kinds of deeds, karma. Uh, uh, one is dana, generosity, uh, doing charity. Uh. Second one is self-mastery. Uh, you can say um, um, self-mastery... Mastery is, for example, of your mind. Uh, that means uh, bhavana, uh, development of the mind. Uh, and of refraining, uh, refraining from doing evil. Uh, that is sila. Uh, so we find in the other suttas, uh, the Buddha says there are three bases of merit. Uh, uh, getting blessings. Uh, dana, sila, and bhavana. Uh, dana is giving. Uh, uh, sila is refraining from evil action. How can we say kim ok? Uh, restraining yourself from evil. And the uh, third one is bhavana, development of the mind. That means you, 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 uh, you master your mind. So that's why it's called self-mastery. Uh, it's because he mastered his mind uh, that he could be reborn in the second jhana heaven. Uh, without the uh, second jhana, how to be reborn there? Uh, now we come to 1.19. Ubayata Sutta. There is one thing monks developed and continually practiced by which both kinds of welfare are acquired and maintained. Welfare here and now, and that pertaining to the future. What is that one thing? It is diligence in wholesome states. This is that one thing. The wise praise diligence in doing deeds of merit. For one who is wise and diligent obtains a twofold benefit. Welfare in the here and now and welfare in the future life. And because one has realized the good, the wise person is called a sage. Uh, so here, welfare now means uh, in this present life. La, and future means in the future lifetimes. La. Uh, that is uh, diligence in acquiring wholesome states. La. Hard working, la. <clears throat> energetic effort. La. Uh, the Buddha says uh, uh, there is one thing uh, that can benefit us. Uh, in some other sutta, it says there is one thing that can benefit us, this life and future lives. Uh, what is that one thing? Diligence. Uh, diligence in in doing good, uh, in cultivating good, uh, skillful life. Uh, 1.20. Atipunja Sutta. Monks, the skeletons of a single person running on and wandering in samsara for an aeon would make a heap of bones, a quantity of bones as large as this Mount Vepula, if there were someone to collect them and if the collection were not destroyed. The bones of a single person accumulated in a single aeon or world cycle uh, would make a heap like a mountain, so said the great, great sage. He declared it to be as great as Mount Vipula, to the north of Vulture's Peak, in the hill fort of Magadha, but when one sees with perfect wisdom the four noble truths as they are, suffering, the origin of suffering, the cessation of suffering, and the noble eightfold path leading to relief from suffering, having merely run on seven times at the most by destroying all fetters, one makes an end of suffering. Uh, so when one understands the four noble truths, uh, then uh, one becomes a sotapanna and, and has uh, seven more Rebirths at the most, uh, and after destroying all the fetters, uh, one enters nibbana. Uh. So we have been in samsara for so long. Uh. Even this one one world cycle, the Buddha is only talking about one world cycle. Uh. Our bones uh, will be as much as Mount Vipula. Uh. But how many world cycles we have been in samsara? I mean, for a long time in samsara. Uh. That's why today we are spiritually mature enough uh, to be interested in the Dhamma. Uh, many world cycles ago, uh, when we were animals, uh, if you, you, somebody tried to teach you the Dhamma, uh, or you're a ghost, uh, you're also not interested. <laughs> but now we have suffered uh, after so many lifetimes, uh, then we are interested in the Dhamma. 1.21, Musavada Sutta. Monks, I say that for an individual who transgresses in one thing, there is no evil deed whatsoever he would not do. What is that one thing? It is this, monks deliberately telling a lie. There is no evil that cannot be done by a person who, deliber who deliberately lies, who transgresses in one thing, taking no account of the next world. Uh, so a person who 
purposely tells a lie, yeah, it's a shameless person. And a shameless person uh, can do anything. Uh, he's not ashamed to do anything. 1.22. Dana Sutta. Monks, if beings knew, as I know, the result of giving and sharing, they would not eat without having given. Nor would they allow the stain of meanness to obsess them and take root in their minds. Even if it were their last morsel, their last mouthful, they would not eat without having shared it if there were someone to share it with. But monks, as beings do not know, as I know, the result of giving and sharing, they eat without having given. The stain of meanness obsesses them and takes root in their minds. If beings only knew, so said the great sage, how the result of sharing is of such great fruit, with a gladdened mind, rid of the stain of meanness, they would duly give to noble ones who make what is given fruitful having given much food as offerings to those most worthy of offerings, the donors go to heaven on departing the human state. Having gone to heaven, they rejoice, and enjoying pleasures there, the unselfish experience the result of generously sharing with others. It's a very nice sutta. If beings, if beings only knew the result of giving and sharing, they would not eat without having given. Mm, and they would not be stingy at all. Uh, but because beings do not know, uh, that's why you see uh, in the world uh, there's so much suffering. There's starvation in Africa. Now in Somalia, this, they show in the papers, uh, uh, people are dying. And other parts of the world, people uh, have too much to eat. Uh, they throw away a lot of the food. Uh, so... If we only knew uh, the result of karma, then we will be very skillful in our karma. 1.23 Meta Bhavana Sutta Monks, whatever grounds there are for making merit productive of a future birth, all these do not equal the sixteenth part of the radiation by mind of loving kindness or release by mind of loving kindness. The release by mind of loving kindness surpasses them and shines forth bright and brilliant. Just as the radiance of all the stars does not equal the sixteenth part of the moon's radiance, but the moon's radiance surpasses them and shines forth bright and brilliant. Even so, whatever grounds there are for making merit productive of a future birth, all these do not equal the sixteenth part of the mind of the uh, released by mind of loving kindness. Just as in the last month of the rainy season in the autumn, when the sky is clear and free of clouds, the sun on ascending dispels the darkness of space and shines forth, bright and brilliant. Even so, whatever grounds there are for making merit productive of a future birth, all these do not equal a sixteenth part of the release by mind of loving kindness. And just as in the night, at the moment of dawn, the morning star shines forth bright and brilliant, even so, whatever grounds there are for making merit productive of a future birth, all these do not equal a sixteenth part of the release by mind of loving kindness. The release by mind of loving kindness surpasses them and shines forth bright and brilliant. For one who mindfully develops boundless loving kindness, Seeing the destruction of clinging, the fetters are worn away. If with an uncorrupted mind he pervades just one being with loving kindly thoughts, he makes some merit thereby. But a noble one produces an abundance of merit by having a compassionate mind towards all living beings. Those royal seers who conquered the earth crowded with beings, went about performing sacrifices. The horse sacrificed, the man sacrificed, the water rites, the soma sacrificed, and that called the unobstructed. But these do not share even a sixteenth part of a well-cultivated mind of love, just as the entire starry host is dimmed by the moon's radiance. One does not kill, nor cause others to kill. Who does not conquer, nor cause others to conquer? Kindly to us all beings, he has enmity for none. This too is the meaning of what was said by the Lord thus. 
I heard. So here, uh, whatever dana we do, uh, cannot compare at all uh, to the mind of loving kindness. Uh. Why? Because uh, sometimes we do dana also, uh, we still have selfishness, meanness inside us. Uh. But if you have a loving kindness, uh, the Buddha says, uh, mind is a forerunner of all states. Uh. So if you have loving kindness towards all beings, uh, then uh, you will always be kind towards all beings. Whereas you do dana, only sometimes you do dana, sometimes you are selfish.